Welcome back guys, long time no see. So what we've been doing lately is I've been trying my best to get out and go up in the woods and bring you this brew bag that I showed you in the last video. But it seems every time I put the equipment in the car and by the time I get there, it's pouring the rain. So I made the decision today to do it underneath the gazebo and that way it didn't matter if it was going to rain or not. <laughs> but hey ho, spent the time setting it up and look it's a cracking day so we'll use that to our advantage and we'll crack on okay so if you remember when i done the last video i showed you this right at the very end when i was out camping at the truck and i had a look at this and i thought yeah it's a great brew bag now full disclaimer this costs about 12 dollars off amazon so it's not the most expensive thing but i was mindful of the fact that when i have my max Expedition gear that is very expensive and you know if you're only going to go up into the woods for a walk uh, and take you know want a cup of tea or whatever that's probably a bit overkill for that kind of thing whereas this now i did say i was going to load this out and try and do a camping trip impossible i stuffed this to the gunnels as i would normally do with my max Expedition bags and the molly webbing all broke and the zips popped open so this unfortunately it's not the kind of quality that you would want if you were wanting a long term for example a bug out bag or something that is going to be robust take a bit of abuse this is not the bag for you that said if all you want is a cup of tea in the woods then i don't see why not i don't see why not this fits the bill so i've loaded this out as my brew bag as as promised uh, and i'm going to bring it to you today so before i crack on what i'll do is i will show you the weight because in most of my videos people ask me oh what's the weight of that uh, so just let me get that out of the way before i forget there we go so the full weight of that i don't know if you can see but it is four kilograms or 8.8 .8 pounds so yes it's slightly on the heavy side uh, but I'm happy with that. You're only, hopefully, you're only going to carry that for an hour, an hour or two. It's quite small. It's quite compact. Uh, the only other additional bit of gear I actually have on this is the Max Expedition Coca-Cola pouch, and you'll you'll see why that's on there in a minute. So let's crack on. The bag itself, as you can see, the Molly all just fell apart when I really loaded it up. So what I've done was I stuck a bit of Velcro onto the front here. And the reason I've done that is as so. In the front pouch here, I have Bushcraft Essentials small stove, okay? And it has Velcro. So rather than putting it in there, I can actually just put that onto there. And it means I can get quick access rather than uh, having to go through the whole zipper thing. And I really like this stove. Uh, so that one sits in there now just before we go any further I've got another prop here because I do have another one there's a large one this is titanium so if anyone's uh, interested in a comparison between the the small and the large just leave me a note in the comments that's something that I'd be quite happy to bring to you so I'll stick that under there and I'll actually set this up in fact before I set it up what I'll do is I'll bring out another prop because uh, we're under the gazebo, nice glass table, don't want to scratch it. So I'll bring a beer drip tray from my beer machine and then I can set this up and show you exactly how it works. It's really just a fold out stove. You put it down, it comes with two bits, um, like so. That goes on and so, so you can see it like that, okay? and then in the top you have a little plate that can go on top and we'll come to that in a minute as we crack on and you also have a couple of trivets that can sit over it uh, and that way if you want to put a pot or something on you can but we'll come back to that in a minute guys okay so that's bushcraft essentials great bit of kit i'll put a photo up as i always do uh including the price and a link although obviously i'm not too keen on putting the prices on things because they change all the all the time especially in this day and age with um, inflation going on and what have you so that's in this pocket now behind that pocket is another pocket and what i have in there is i have a bag of couscous 
So this is a really easy meal to have if you're out for a walk. It, it, you know, literally, you boil some water and five minutes later you've got a pot of couscous. So that's really good. And then also in here I have another bag, which is, this actually has a pot noodle. Well, it's a type, it's a packet of noodles, basically, a pot noodle. Dehydrated. Again, it's got the sachet in there, so I think this is curry flavour. Yeah, you can heat that up in your pot jobs are good in that's you got some hot food for out in the day and that's about it for the bottom with the exception of my torch so this is the edc 27 from nightcore uh, i'll put that down and if again if anyone's interested in seeing this torch in action or a review of it just give me a shout more than happy to bring that to you as well i'll set that off to the side uh, uh, on the outside of the bag again, I have uh, my sat map GPS. This one has a full one fifty thousand scale map of the whole of the UK, so it's really easy to go find trails. You can download them, you can put them on there, follow them along. What I normally like doing is I quite like if I'm out and about and I find a really interesting something a place that i might want to go camping or something like that i can simply uh, mark it tag it stick it on the gps and then that way i can always find my way back uh, so i find that quite handy and it's also handy in a situation where if you get lost then you can use this to navigate your way out it's got the inbuilt compass loads of features um so yeah it is quite an old model but as far as I'm concerned, all you really need is an eight-figure grid reference to find out where you are. Indeed, if you've got a map and a compass, it helps you to get out uh, out of a tricky situation. If you find yourself in one, the key is is not to find yourself in that situation in the first place. So again, going around the bag on the top, what I have in here is I have my good old Faithy Trangy stove. And I always keep it in here because uh, on one occasion I had it in my pack and it leaked a little bit and it was, yeah, it was pretty messy and I didn't like it. So pretty much on all my packs, you can see here from my, my EDC bag, or my bug out bag, sorry, uh, I have another one there. I have them pretty much on all, all the bags I have. So that's that. And again, what you can do here, is you can have a an elastic band around the top of it there i'll just put that i'll just put that out there on the camera and you can see there's an elastic band and that simply makes it really easy uh, to get the lid off especially if you've got cold hands so and do that it's a uh, it's a meth burner basically the the fuel itself is quite inexpensive and then that can indeed sit in there okay so put that in the, there for the moment and you'll see why in a minute uh, other things i have i this bag didn't come with this padded strap this strap is off a vertex bag that i have that i use for my laptop etc it's a really nice bag for this video and if i do use this for going for a walk i always steal the strap off that just to make it a little bit more comfortable on the shoulder and then going around to the back it does have the sleeve now i, th I do believe this is a rip off of the max Edition lanuna bag i think that's how you pronounce it so a fraction of the cost but i always carry a little pouch in the back and i can see the contents there i have a, a some super glue i have some compede some modium ibuprofen burn gel um paracetamol basically i've got some potassium permanganate some codeine and some antiseptic wipe in there as well and then if you turn that round, you can see one of the things I always carry with me. Small bar of soap, great if you really dirty hands and things, you want to give them a wash, that's brilliant. But I always carry a spare pair of boot laces. I've been in a situation once where I uh, went camping one night, pulled my boot laces uh, on in the morning and snapped the lace, and it was a pretty miserable experience walking out of there. So I always carry spare laces with me wherever i go not that i would be planning on taking my boots off on a day walk but it's just something that i have and i've always go on there better to have than to have not so that's the outside of the pack uh moving on into the inside of the pack we have here you've probably if you watch my videos you'll have been definitely seen this before 
This is what I class as my small fire lighting kit. And basically what's inside here, I, I won't go through it all, but I do need the lighter from the top for my stove. Um, and then there's some different cotton wools, Vaseline, etc. A little bit of uh, f fat wood and, and so on and so forth. But it's a nice little kit. There's a fire steel in there. It zips up. And I also have a, a little luminescent uh, strip on there. So if you do put it down at night, you can find it. Okay. It'll glow in the dark, basically. So let me fire that up. Yep, that's going. And I will put this on the top. And we'll just let that start up for a little bit. Like so. Yeah, I can still feel it hot. Uh, other things in here then, again, inside. So I normally have... Just a little bag inside there. I have a, a two-in-one coffee. I have a, a hot chocolate. I have some coffee, which I'm going to use today. And then I have one of those packets of uh, sort of it's a it's a, a a soup, but it's in a packet. And it basically, you can pour some water on it. Two or three minutes later, you've got a nice little. Uh, well, that one there is chili chicken. It's actually quite tasty. Uh, not bad at all. Going back into this bag now, one of the things I have, I have it in this Tupperware because I don't always carry it, but sometimes if I'm going up into the woods and I'm going to be there for the day and I want to prep a campsite for potentially going in there on a Friday night or a Saturday night, I'll go up and I will take inside, I'll take my saw and I will take my R2 Scout. Now I know there's a lot of controversy about whether or not you should be carrying this type of thing with you outside in the wood. It is illegal to have a fixed blade knife. I think we're fortunate here in Scotland. The police are a little bit more flexible. So in this scenario, with what I've got in here, I'm going to argue all the way that this is not an offensive weapon. It's a tool. Uh, it's a tool for me to carry out my hobby. It's inside the bag, it's zipped, it's inside the container as well. So it's not something that I can really get access to where, you know, I could do people damage. Uh, you know, if, if somebody's going to let you open a bag, take out a container, then take out a knife, if they're still, still hanging about waiting for you to do that, then they're probably not the kind of people you want to be fighting with in the first place. But I, I do think if you're going to have this, have it as a tool, put it away, keep it safe, uh, and try and put as many barriers in there as possible to get that in your hand. So if the police do stop you and they do ask questions, you can explain why you have that. And and up here in Scotland, I must say that the police are, are, are reasonably good up here. They would understand that. Uh, doing that in London, Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, yeah, it's you're going to be getting into trouble for that. Okay. So so think about really carefully whether you need that or not. And then last but not least is the actual brew kit itself so that's that bag empty now uh, i can i'll chuck that over there out the way and we'll go in here now for those who follow the channel regularly you'll have seen this before um, and in fact i'll put a link up so if you want to actually see this in action and how it works and how it pieces together or what have you then there is actually a video on my channel that will show you how to do that uh, we start off on the outside and we have the Millbank bag. I, I love this bit of kit. I've had Millbank bags for 30, if not plush years. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic. They don't rely on any moving parts, bat power, anything like that. They're just nice and simple. Excuse me. Nice and simple. Um, and, and like I said, they're pretty bomb proof. That's better. So that's the Millbank bag. I then have a small cup that I have my coffee in, which we'll have in a minute. I have the, uh, it's actually a fish mouth spreader enabled for you to get your, your hook out, uh, but we can use that on the bottle to put it on and off the stove, which we'll do in a minute. I then have, it's quite, 
Actually, the reason that this is jammed in there quite tightly is because it stops it from all rattling about. So it does work, but it does need a bit of an effort to take it out for the spoon. So we'll keep the coffee and the spoon there. I've then got a little carabiner with some skewers on it. Again, if you go and watch that video, uh, you'll see how I use these. Fantastic. And then indeed you have the, this is all the Pathfinder stuff, so Dave Canterbury. It's the very first version that he came out with. I, I got that and I, I must admit I really like it. It serves the purpose. You you have the 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 pot there. You also have the stove which works fine with the, the hexi burner if you don't want to do it that way. But I find that really handy if you want, you know, you can use this. You can use this with the stove for making a brew, but you can use the transi burner with the pot so you've got both on the go at the same time. But again, that adds to the weight, so you may want to tailor that up or down to suit your needs. Stick that there. And then inside, I have the pot lid. And I have a large mug here. So again, this would be where I would have my, my noodles. Uh, and, and again, what you can fit in there, actually no problem, is you get these pepperami uh, sausage sort of long sticks. They're fantastic. If you stick a skewer on them and stick them over that, I wouldn't do it on mess, but if you've done that with wood, they, then that tastes fantastic. Uh, you can put that in there. So let's crack on. There is some water in there, so that sits there, and then that can simply sit on top. This part of the stove actually allows you to control the flame a little bit. Uh, for putting it on or off, but uh, you know if you're just having a brew, that's that's brilliant. So that, folks, is more or less what I have in the brew bag. Now, like I said, I wanted to try and load that up to go camping, and I was like, ah, oh, really couldn't do it. The the thread and the stitching was coming out. The the zips were breaking. It, it basically uh, was not a very nice thing, and I wouldn't trust it to go camping. Going for, a, like I said, going for a walk in the woods, fine, absolutely fine, $12, $12 right, it's not expensive, it do, if it does break, you buy another one. You go and buy the, the Maxpedition branded type of stuff, and obviously you're then, you're starting now to talk about a serious amount of money. And I was going to load this up and do a wee camping trip on it, and I came out one day, and I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a, a hole in it. If you go back and have a watch on that video, I had nuts and berries and things like that up here. I left it in my outbuildings and boom, a mouse. I was in about that. So although you think your uh, Maxpedition gear is is bomb proof, it's certainly not mouse proof because a Scottish mouse chewed through that in the night uh, and was away with the booty. So I'm really disappointed in that. It's uh, one of the main parts of the bag. Um, I, I, I will try to stitch it, but really annoyed me. And I don't want to buy another one because, like I said, Maxpedition, hugely expensive. Uh, and I've seen a lot of comments over the, 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 the years for basically, you know, oh, you must have spent a fortune on Maxpedition stuff. So I had a look. Uh, so obviously I'm wanting to try and find a, a, a new bug out bag but I'm not going to buy Maxpedition not because I don't like it I just think it's more really expensive for what it is and right now I'd rather spend my money on other pieces of equipment but what I did find was this and this is a, a Magforce one so I think it's exactly the same as Maxpedition but lo and behold it's about half the price so I found this on uh, Heine Haines in the UK, they are the distributor for Magforce, and I quite like this. So much so that this will be my next video. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll bring a review of this, the sizes, what have you. I haven't seen a website where they're actually there, but I'll, 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 I'll get the sizes. We can have a review of it, then we can load it up. I've actually started to load it up now with various items. Uh, you can see that. I've got a pot in there, another mill bank, bang, some uh, cordage, etc. But that, like I said, that's another video and I'll bring that to you. It's quite a nice bag. Excuse me. So, you know, half the price of this uh, and it's perfectly good. Uh, I've got, it comes with a strap 
and basically I've, I've kind of done that but again we can save that feature for another day in time so I think my is nearly boiling now so I'll get a little spoon of coffee and this uh, indeed is where the mill bank bag can come in handy although I must say if you are using it as a the transi you've got to be careful because uh, all this bottle will suit up again now I've heard and I don't know if it's true if you put a little bit of um, hand sanitizer in, in with that it stops it from suiting but I'll be honest guys I don't know if that's that's true or not what I normally do I just have to be mindful I mean if you're outside this is no issue but I'm uh, mindful that this is my good table outside so we'll take that off and put that to one side and then I can use the mill bank bag to hold it and pour myself a brew okay and then uh, the good thing about this is uh, yep, and off to one side yeah, throw that on the grass and then you just have to fiddle about and get that on to put out your stove there you go now that should die down and go out fairly soon I hope definitely dying down now so can be done what else yeah I think that's about it what else is going on uh, here back home so obviously uh, I've been absent for a while there is reasons for that I, I, I won't I won't go into too much detail but if you are regular to the channel you'll know I've got some issues at the moment um, after an illness but it's not going to stop me I am getting better all the time which is great uh, one person let me I'm, I'm actually looking for my phone because I, I did have their name and I forgot all about it so let me just tap into my phone because there is someone I would really like to thank there we have it so I would very much like to say thank you to Deersley Polish bought a coffee okay so I'm going to put that up there and if you're watching thank you very much this is the first person who's bought me a coffee uh, for stick survival so again thank you so much it means a lot to me uh, and that's exactly what i did the money came through and i went and had myself a cup of coffee and that was on that day of that email it was on the 16th of august and that's when i thought do you know what if people are going to go and put their hand in their pocket and buy me a coffee, then the least I can do is be a little bit more regular, posting videos, out of so much I can bring you. And if the weather's crap, it actually looks like it's starting to change. The, the gazebo curtains are starting to twitch and I can see the dark clouds coming. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's pouring the rain in the next few minutes or at least within an hour. But that said, I can easily do that. I'm completely undercover. Um, so there's no problem it can just tip down as much as it wants so thank you very much for buying me a coffee uh thank you for all the people who continue to comment on my channel it's absolutely it it, it really is nice to wake up in the morning and go on to gmail uh, and, and in my mail settings and see all these really nice comments people supporting me all the way telling me that they still want to see videos etc and there's loads more to come uh, hopefully I, I've never been a summer camper never ever ever I absolutely cannot stand uh, the the midges here in Scotland they, they, they torment me they drive me mental I hate them so I've always been a winter camper so hopefully as we start getting into September October November and December and indeed all the way through I can start bringing you some camping videos uh, I have 
uh, new torches, I've got head torches, I've also got a couple of new EcoFlow generators, that's great power solutions. Uh, I'm working my way towards buying a tent box for my truck, uh, so hopefully we can do some more out outdoor videos there as well. Uh, like I previously said, I want to start going round. We have this route in Scotland called the NC500. If you go in June, July and August, it is just absolutely chock-a-block with tourists and their big, big muckle motor homes. I mean, you know, great that they've came here to do that and wish them all the best, but that's not what I'm interested in. I would rather go up there in end of September, October, or, or even later on in the season when it's quiet uh, and basically can show you guys the west coast of Scotland and how beautiful that is. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So... I'm going to love and leave you there, uh, short video, half an hour say, and again, thank you very much, okay, and to you, dear Zuri Pollock, I, I, if I'm not pronouncing your name right, I do apologise, but anyway, here's the coffee, thank you very much, and uh, till the next time folks, cheers.